He is the most famous fighter ace in the history of aviation, and the subject of countless books, TV programs and feature films. Manfred Freiherr von Richthofen, the daring World War I flying ace who shot down 80 Allied aircraft in combat, was known internationally during his own lifetime as the Red Baron. Due to his aristocratic title and the garish colour of his several different aircraft, most famously the aircraft he died in, the Fokker DR-1 triplane. Awarded every honour Imperial Germany could bestow, including the highest of them all, the Pour le Merite or Blue Max, the Red Baron died at the age of only 25 on the 21st of April 1918 during a dogfight over the Western Front. Great debate still surrounds his demise, which it is not the intention of this video to address. Suffice it to say, von Richthofen was mortally wounded as he pursued a Sopwith Camel fighter being flown by novice Canadian pilot Wilfred May. Richthofen pursued May across the Somme River at very low level. Another Canadian, the experienced Captain Roy Brown, dived to try and rescue May, but Richthofen avoided the attack and continued after the rookie pilot. Shortly after, the Red Baron's triplane veered away and made a rough landing in a field just north of the French village of vaux Australian infantry, who had been firing machine guns at von Richthofen's aircraft as it passed low overhead, rushed over to the machine to discover the German pilot dying. Muttering a few words in German, the only word that stood out to the Australians who couldn't understand the language was kaput. Then the Red Baron died. Word soon spread that the most famous air ace of the war had crash-landed, and within three minutes over 100 Australian soldiers swarmed over the Red Triplane hunting for souvenirs. Von Richthofen was lifted from the plane and taken to a hangar, the base of No. 3 Squadron Australian Flying Corps, whose commanding officer, Major David Blake, would take charge of the famous corpse. What follows is the macabre story of how the Red Baron could not find peace in death, of how his body became a sort of national trophy, resulting in him being buried not once, but four times, used as a propaganda tool by two German governments, and very nearly lost in not only World War II, but also during the Cold War. The Red Baron's life had been full of adventure and danger. In death, his mortal remains went on further adventures across Europe until finally finding peace in the care of his family. On the 21st of April 1918, the Red Baron's body was stripped and washed before four Allied medical officers examined him to establish a cause of death. Using a piece of fencing wire, the doctors traced the path made by a single 303 caliber bullet that had struck von Richthofen in the right side, passing through the right lung and heart, exiting through the left chest. An entry hole on the right side of the triplane's cockpit matched the fatal wound, and it appeared that the Red Baron had been killed by machine gun fire from Australian troops on the ground, living just long enough to land his plane close by. The corpse was photographed, redressed in the uniform when he had died, a captain of the 1st Ulan Cavalry Regiment. Meanwhile, the souvenir hunters almost completely demolished von Richthofen's Fokker triplane. Many parts still exist today. The seat that the Red Baron was sitting on in the aircraft was kept by Roy Brown, and later donated to the Royal Canadian Military Institute in Toronto in 1920, where it resides today, as well as a side panel from the German aircraft signed by Brown's fellow pilots. The engine and the twin machine guns are on display at the Imperial War Museum in London, 
and the aircraft's control column at the Australian War Memorial in Canberra. Preparations were made to bury the Red Baron. The responsibility lay with Major Blake and No. 3 Squadron. Base Aero Mechanics made a wooden coffin with a zinc plate nailed to the top with an inscription in English and German that gave details of the occupant. On the afternoon of the 22nd of April 1918, the squadron conducted a full military funeral. Von Richthofen's coffin was covered with flowers and pennants in the German national colours and borne to the grave by six Australian pilots acting as pallbearers. At the end of the service, Australian other ranks fired a rifle salute over the open grave in the village cemetery at Bertangle near Amiens. Photographs were taken of the funeral, and together with the photos taken of a dead von Richthofen, copies were dropped over the German lines by British aircraft to prove that the Red Baron was indeed dead, and that the Allies had behaved properly in affording him an elaborate funeral which also served Allied propaganda purposes as well, the death of the Red Baron being filmed and shown in cinemas as a great morale booster for Allied populations. The first intimation that von Richthofen would not be left in peace occurred that very evening when some local French civilians vandalised his grave. The flowers were torn apart and a cross made by No. 3 Squadron stolen. Australian General Sir John Monash complained bitterly to the local mayor about such uncivilised behaviour. Number 3 Squadron personnel made another cross out of an aircraft propeller and restored the grave. The Red Baron only lay in peace for a few years until the early 1920s when the French decided to gather up all the German bodies from local cemeteries and inter them into a huge graveyard at Freekor. So von Richthofen's remains were dug up and transferred. However, he was not to remain at Freekor for long. The Richthofen family wanted the Red Baron to be reburied in Germany the family's estate in Lower Silesia, next to his father and his brother Lothar, himself a World War I ace and Blue Max holder who had been killed in a flying accident in 1922. Through connections inside the German government, the family managed to obtain permission from the French authorities to disinter the Red Baron. But the German government decided that von Richthofen's remains should go instead to Berlin, Reluctantly, the Richthofen family agreed that the Weimar Republic could hold a state funeral for the Red Baron, reburying his remains in the Invalidenfriedhof Cemetery. Created by King Frederick the Great, the Invalidenfriedhof held the remains of many German military heroes, including the tomb of Gerhard von Scharnhorst, a military hero of the Napoleonic Wars. Taken by train to Berlin, a grand state funeral was held, and the Weimar Republic's army, the Reichsheer, in the presence of World War I military leader and now President of Germany, Field Marshal Paul von Hindenburg, laid the Red Baron to rest in a large marble top grave, as befitting a hero of the nation. But for some, the grave was not grand enough. In the mid-1930s, the Nazi government decided to highlight Richthofen once again to the German public. Not long after the formation of the Luftwaffe, the new independent German Air Force, a large memorial service was held at Richthofen's grave. 
a massive stone marker was set up behind the grave inscribed with one word, Richthofen. Hermann Göring, Richthofen's old squadron comrade and now head of the Luftwaffe, gave a speech and many former World War I flyers gathered at the graveside. The Red Baron was now recast as a German hero for the National Socialist state. The Invalidenfriedhof became a burial place for top Nazis as World War II progressed, including Heinrich Himmler's second-in-command, SS Obergruppenführer Reinhard Heydrich, following his assassination in Prague in 1942. But as World War II entered its final stages, the Invalidenfriedhof suffered along with the rest of Berlin. Damaged in Allied air raids and by the street fighting between German and Red Army troops in the final days before surrender. In the years after the war, the cemetery found itself in the Soviet occupation zone of Berlin. Seriously neglected, many of its grave markers damaged or overgrown, the Red Baron's resting place among them. But in May 1951, the East Berlin authorities closed the cemetery and undertook some repairs to its many monuments. But then in 1961, as relations rapidly deteriorated between East and West, the Berlin Wall was built, running right past the Invalidenfriedhof. Indeed, part of the wall's death zone, a special cleared area used by guards to spot and shoot down escapers, ran through the cemetery. The large Third Reich-era stone marker above the Red Baron's grave was hit several times by bullets fired by border guards at people fleeing to West Berlin. By the 1970s, it looked as though the East German authorities would remove what remained of the Invalidenfriedhof. But what stopped them was Scharnhorst's large tomb. The old German hero having become adopted as one of the heroes of the new East German army. The Richthofen family requested that the Red Baron's remains be moved once again, this time to the family grave plot. After World War II, the Richthofen family had lost their ancestral castle in Lower Silesia as the region was occupied by the Soviets and then given to Poland. The family had re-established itself in West Germany. In 1975, the East German government agreed to the request. The Red Baron was dug up and moved for the fourth time since 1918 to the Zudfriedhof in Wiesbaden. But the now empty grave remained in Berlin. Today, the bullet-scarred grave marker remains along with a stone plaque explaining who once lay there. So ends the story of the Red Baron's movements after death a macabre story of a young hero who became a political football for different post-World War I German governments, who suffered the indignity of being exhumed and reburied four times in 57 years. Though now at peace in Wiesbaden, the Red Baron's fame remains undiminished 102 years after his death and will long outlive his mortal remains. Happy Halloween!